lot of people, for a lot of us, it's it's going to get a little tough. It really is. But if you are righteous, if you trust in God, then you're going to come out just fine. You will prosper. You will be blessed. You will inherit. You will be joint heirs with Christ himself of everything. They've got five months at best. You've got the eternity. So, who's got it better? 14. The wicked have drawn out the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy and to slay such as be of upright conversation. Their sword shall enter into their own heart, and their bows shall be broken. 16. A little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken. These these weapons that they use against the righteous, against the innocent, against the poor and the needy, they're going to be broken. But the Lord upholdeth the righteous. And you know, I'm reminded as well, you've got these prosperity preachers, and it's not really to to lament or to rant on them, but it, it is even written in, in Revelation chapter 2, verse 9, to the church of Smyrna, where it says that, that he knows, God knows, Christ knows their works, he knows their tribulation, their trials, and their poverty. But he says, "But thou art rich, and that you have, you you can have Christians, you can have churches, who maybe struggle day to day to make ends meet for whatever the reason, but spiritually they're rich beyond measure. And and these times in particular, not that you don't need to make a living or, or need to have basic necessities." But being rich spiritually is a currency that you really want to have, friend. Again, not that the other matters not, or matters not at all, but if you're rich spiritually speaking, that's a lot better than to be rich materially and and headed to the lake of fire when it's all said and done. Verse 18. The Lord knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time. In the, in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. And you know, for the deeper student, you should really take comfort in that verse right there. You really should. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time. Well, what's the evil time? It's, it's the time of Satan's tribulation. When he's here deceiving the world as Antichrist. And those who are ashamed are going to be those who thought they were worshiping Jesus. Only to find out it was Satan himself. And uh, so those who are unashamed are those who weren't deceived. Those who weren't deceived, even as the world went through a famine for hearing the true word of God. Amos chapter 8 verse 11 they were still well fed. They were satisfied spiritually. Take comfort in that verse right there. Remember that verse. Psalms thirty-seven, nineteen. In these days in particular, take great comfort in that. Verse 20, another acrostic in this, in this psalm. But the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of lambs. They shall consume into smoke shall they consume away. I mean, they're going to be gone. Burning forever? No, they're going to be gone in a poof of smoke. No more. Nothing left of them to burn, even. If you want to look at it that way. 21. The wicked borroweth and payeth not again, but the righteous righteous, sueth mercy and giveth. For such as he blessed of him shall inherit the earth, and they that cursed of him shall be cut off. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. He has his eye on you. He's there to help you at any time that you need it, when you're in him. 
when you call to him, when you love him. I have been young and now am old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. He, being God, is ever merciful, and lendeth, well, this also being the righteous, and, and lendeth, and his seed is blessed. Depart from evil, and do good, and dwell forevermore, live forever. You know, e- even the evil. Even a tear, even one of the synagogue of Satan, if, if they depart from evil and do good, they live forever. They, if they believe in Jesus Christ, although they be of Satan's very seed line, they're of the family of God at that point. They're grafted in, and they, they inherit eternal life just like anybody else. 28, for the Lord love, loveth judgment, and for sake of not his saints, they are preserved forever. But the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land, and dwell therein forever. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom, and his tongue talketh of judgment, that which is right, that is just. The law of his God is in his heart, none of his steps shall, shall slide. He's not going to fall. Um, and if he does stumble a little bit, again, God's going to hold him up, as we have in verse 24. The wicked watcheth the righteous, and seeketh to slay him. The Lord will not leave him in his hand, nor condemn him when he is judged. 34, the last acrostic in this psalm. Wait on the Lord, and keep his way, and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. You're going to see the wicked go into that lake of fire. All of those that are stirring up all of this panic over this coronavirus, trying to ruin people economically, trying to take complete control of, of the country, and all the governments of the world, and all the banks of the world, which to a certain extent they already have control over, but trying to destroy people so then they can supposedly save them with their with their grand plan guess what when the time comes unless they straighten up you're going to see what they have coming to them you're going to see them cut off you're going to see them go off go up in that poof of smoke like the fat from a lamb and they won't ever even be remembered again you know, it's really almost sad in a way, and I'm not saying I feel sorry for him, but here you have people who are God's children, as much as he created them, that would throw it all away to have five months, when it comes down to it, of total rule, and, and not even that, because it will be under Satan, but to have five months when they could have had the eternity. You know, and again, there, there's no tears shed, so to speak, but it, it still, it really is sad. But, uh, you know, one, one follows after their father in more ways than one, I suppose we can say. I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a green bay tree, yet he passed away, and lo, he was not. I, I mean, he thought he was something. And then God. Yet I saw, yea, I saw him, but he could not be found. Mark the perfect man, and behold the upright. For the end of that man is peace. I don't know, is that what you want? It should be. But the transgressors shall be destroyed together, the end of the wicked shall be cut off. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord, he is their strength in the time of trouble, and the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. Um, I've got just about five minutes left. I've got time to go to one more place. And um, you know what? I I think I will. You can make a note of... uh, of uh, Isaiah 35, which deals actually with going into the millennium and the eternity, 
It's very beautiful in terms of uh, teaching people the right way, putting aside some of the weaknesses of the flesh, body, which will be no more at that time, some of the physical handicaps, some of the spiritual stumbling, stumbling blocks, if you will. But let's remain here in Psalms and see if we can't get this knocked out. Psalms 34, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. Again, you get a little um, unsettled over what's going on in the world right now. Seek the Lord. Seek him. Seek, seek his help, his wisdom, his comfort. And he will deliver you from your fears if you have them, which you really you don't need to. But that being said, they looked unto him and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. Verse 6, this poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. Verse 7, the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him, those that love him, that revere him. And delivereth them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. O oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints. For there is no want to them that fear him. Ten, the young lions, just, the young lions do lack and suffer hunger. But they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. He takes care of his own. He takes care of his children. I don't know. Do you believe that? Uh, it's written right here. It's written in, uh, as I know, there's some people that are really trying to emphasize, um, I believe, Mark chapter 6, uh, um, where you have, uh, among other things, that even the sparrow, God notices even when a sparrow falls, and even that little sparrow is able to find food, is able to find shelter. He knows what your needs are in the flesh, and he knows what your spiritual needs are. Verse 11, Come, ye children, hearken unto me, I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that desireth life, and loveth many days, that he may see good? Keep thy tongue from evil, and thy lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil, and do good. Seek peace, and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. Again, he hears. You think these people out here are saying, oh, he's, he doesn't see, he doesn't hear. You would better believe he hears when one of his children is in trouble. When one of his children needs something, one of his children gets abused. He sees and hears it just fine. Verse 16, The face of the Lord is against them that do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of all their troubles. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such be of a contrite spirit, those who repent. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. We don't necessarily have it easy, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. He keepeth all of his bones, not one of them is broken, which refers even to Christ. Evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. You know, watch what goes on in this world. Watch what's going on right now. But don't fear anything. Don't worry about that. Be wise. You know, you know, be wise to try to prepare as much as you can. But if you love him, go to him. If you believe in him, trust in him. And he will certainly care for you. The wicked uh, that think they have their day, all oh, they have their day. But it's not the day that they want. But for you, you trust in him and you'll have eternal life. I'm Jason Hawes. This has been American Faith Today.